the 100 meter, the 200 meter sprint. And if you find the clip of somebody winning the sprint, where they're here, on the line, get set, go. Sprint like that, then maybe we'll talk about your knees staying down there. But until then, your knees have to be up high. So on your jump rope stuff, what you guys are going to do. Um, you guys, if you're using a jump rope, hopefully it's, like I said yesterday, of appropriate size so you don't have to tuck in the air. But your sprints are either, not either, I'm just going to say that it's this way because it's, well, I'll give you the option. Both require a little bit more energy one way or the other, but I'm here and I'll sprint. This is what I mean by sprint. I literally have to jump rope faster. Or you guys can try the double without shrinking. Where you're here and you're doing your your um, your double hops with a bigger jump rope. If you're not doing that, if you don't have a jump rope, you don't have the room for it, what I want you guys to do is mimic your sparring footwork. Be here, moving around, your goal is to stay on your toes. And then when you hear me say sprint, you're just whatever way you were facing, that's when your, your legs start going. Okay, kind of tension. Well, Thursday. Position and student creed. I developed myself physically and mentally based on the Mile High Karate spirit. I will only fight and protect my life and the lives of others. I achieve my fullest potential in developing knowledge, honesty, and strength. What's your goal? And touch your mouth. Okay, one minute. Your break in between rounds will be as long as your sprint. So, 10 second break, 20 second, 30 second, 40 second. And. Go. Oh, come on. Why don't you have a massive bun on the top of your head? That was so killer. It was such a killer style, Miss Alcala. I'm so disappointed. Grow your hair as long as you can so that you can just have like a globe on the top of your head. That's my dream. And, you know, I'm getting my, I'm supposed to be at least if I, if I don't suck, get my fifth degree this year. So, you know, if you really wanted me to get a gift, just get some extensions, put it in your hair, and then come on stage, perform with a globe this big on your head. And sprint. Sprinty sprint. Knees up. Knees up. Unless you're in an apartment and there's somebody under you, you need to get your knees up. And time. Don't get comfortable because you only have 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and go. Are you doing a fighting stance, Jordan? Or are you like raising your hand while doing your footwork at the same time? Because your front hand's out here like this and you keep coming towards the camera and going away from the facel. I just want to know, are you raising your hand towards me or are you just, that's just your stance, okay. 10 seconds before you sprint. And sprint. Knees up, knees up. This is what I mean, like this the whole time. And time. 20 seconds will be your break.
You ready? And go. Remember this one will be a, a sprint for a full 30 seconds. And again, as always, guys, remember you're doing your best, whatever that may mean for you and your current health. Ready and sprint, go. Knees, 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 knees. Knees and speed. Some of you guys are doing like a jog. That's cool, I guess. And time. 30 second break, got one more. Make sure you guys have water nearby if you need it. Get ready. And go. This one you guys aren't gonna have a whole lot of comfort in. Five seconds before. And sprint. This one, you're going to be thinking to yourself, you're sprinting the whole time. Good God, when is this all going to be over? And uh, the answer is never. Suffer well, my brothers and sisters, suffer well. Ten seconds left, maybe. Or maybe I'll just accidentally restart the clock. And time. All right, you guys have, ooh, oops. Just 40 seconds to get some water and then come back. Churchman, count the box. It is Thursday. Uh, and just like last week, do the box and then one week. I, I wasn't sure if anybody was going to come back that wasn't here, so I didn't mark that one down. Okay, so we are now at our hands, our final stage before our brains, which we may or may not do, depending on you, sort of. Remember, your footwork sets up everything. If I don't know how to move my feet, I don't know how to engage and disengage from my opponent. Then we talked about using our body, meaning that we are using this top half in tandem. Everything is compounding on one layer. It's not separate things that make it great. It's them working together that make them great. I talked about using last week my body to help move. Technically, it's referred to as head movement, but considering it's the body that's doing the movement, while the head is the target, it's really body movement, but whatever semantics. We talked about the position of your waist, not directly, but indirectly, we talked about it with footwork, is going to determine how well whatever techniques you're choosing to throw are going to be. So if I'm sideways, they're going to be really good for my kicks. 
is not going to be really good for my back punch. At this 45, now my hand's slightly forward. Now it's a lot easier for me to throw that back punch. Uh, unless you're boxing, nobody should be here. You can do this. You're just at a higher disadvantage against somebody who kicks a lot because literally somebody can just thrust kick you all day. If you're, if, unless you know what you're doing with said thrust kick, this makes you super vulnerable to a lot of frontal techniques and it completely eliminates every kick except the thrust kick because in order to round kick, I still have to snap my hip. It's still, a, it, it's a brief moment, but it's still enough time for somebody skilled enough to see it and counter it or evade it. Our hands. Active and illusion. That's a better word. Active hands and illusionary hands are what we're talking about today. Our active hands. Our active hands have to do with what I'm doing actively to be manipulating or setting myself in position to get things where I need them for my hand techniques. So what you guys are going to be doing is this first one we're going to be talking about probing or you could say it's fainting, but it's not a heavy faint. And we'll talk about the difference between heavy faints and light faints. The light faint is what I would consider a probe. So all I'm going to be doing, whatever footwork I'm doing, you can apply it both to your hands and your feet. I'm just going to be moving around. And every now and then, I'm going to be throwing off a very soft technique. And you can see, if you're paying attention, when I throw up, my hand's not even fully open. So I'm just very lightly, as I'm moving around, throwing my hand technique out there. My aim is two things. One, I'm trying to see what my distance is. So every time I, I probe and nothing hits, or I'm not in contact with a glove or a shoulder, I know I'm too far away. It's pointless for me to throw any kind of hands. My second benefit is every time I throw a probe and they react a little bit, now I'm gathering information on what it is that I can see from what my opponent is doing. So you guys are just going to spend the next minute. You're going to be here. You're going to be snapping out your probes. They're not any purpose, and they're not going for any specific target. So if you guys could for me, you're going to throw them right now. Well, in general, not to a specific target. You're going to throw them right now to right here. Not the head, not below, right at where the glove is. And so I'm just going to be moving around, glove, glove, glove. And that's all I'm going to be doing. And it doesn't matter where you guys move. Okay? Damn me. Damn One minute. Boys. Ready, and go. A little pause. I already see some of you here. So the probe needs to be thrown lazily. If you throw it, and this, some of this stuff involves more mental stuff. If I throw it too fast, then I am acclimating my opponent to a certain cadence. Meaning that if I'm here, and this is my pro, my next one that comes out, they're already ready for it because they're used to that speed. But if I'm here, and I'm light, 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 and then that one snaps, once I've made them vulnerable to that, oh, they're not really doing anything, the moment that they relax is where I snap out. But if they're already tense from me also being tense, it makes it harder for that technique to land. So again, very light. This It's not even moving with any kind of speed. You're just probing out. Ready and go. Don't keep your eye on the camera. The camera's not the bad guy. Uh, time real quick. I should have, well, it appears I should have specified this. You guys should be doing this according to how you spot. So I probed how I would be moving around, me personally. If I'm here, this might be how I would do it. If you are somebody that's very active, 
you're one of the, you, you do a lot of bouncing. You're doing the same thing. It's just, and you can see when you're watching me, it's very disorienting or it's very awkward for me to be this active and then to throw out a technique that's like that. But it doesn't matter, that's the point. If you're somebody that likes kicking a lot, then you're just doing the same thing. I would be here sideways and my probe would just be my chamber. If you guys have ever sparred me and have done that, that's what I was doing. Or if you sparred any kicker and they did that, that's what they're doing. I'm just here and I'm just testing my kick distance uh, or I'm seeing what your reaction is to me chambering my leg up. So do the pro, but do it for you, how you stand, how you move. Last 30 seconds, go. 11. Can you just delete them? I mean, you can and you can leave them in there. Well, that's what they talk about. What would you prefer? For what? So they put club cards and that type of stuff. They're sending pictures and not doing this. Well, that, because I won't be going through yours, so that, that's up to you. Well, what are we doing as a team? Oh, I don't think we, we never said team wise. She always just said you can either leave them in there so you can always go back and check them, or you can just mark it and know that it was there. How do you, you can mark one individually, you can mark a picture individually? I mean, once you mark that it's been turned in, you don't have to still see it to go, but oh, I turned in because they'll already have that book club picture in their overall grade. And time. Okay, so just like Mr. Conley just did, now that's what you guys are going to do is you're going to add in the First hand strike. Now again, hopefully you guys are starting to, to get where I've been trying to take you. Understand the concept. Don't get stuck on the move. The concept applies both to hands and feet, and the concept applies to both a front punch, a back fist, a bridge hand, when it comes to the second strike. All right now, I want you to keep your pro as a front punch. Because just like our universal chamber, my front punch at the last second can turn into a ridge. My front punch at the last second can turn into a back fist. I can't start a ridge hand and then suddenly make it into a front punch. It's awkward. I would literally just have to front punch this way. Or I can't start a back fist and then make it a front It's awkward movement. I would just have to awkwardly punch this way. But the, this can turn into both of those. So that's, I want it to be secret. Your second technique, whatever you decide, whether it's with the front or the backhand, is gonna be the one that breaks the rhythm of what you're doing. So I'll be here, I'm probing out my technique, I'm probing it out, and then I'm snapping the second one. Or I'm here, if I'm using my front hand, I'm probing, and then I'm snapping my front hand. You guys can do the same thing with a kick. I can be here and very lazily just be sticking my leg out and then I shoot the side kick out. Okay, so one tech, you're probing, you're trying to get that rhythm, snap the other one. One minute, ready and go. Monitor, you can do the same thing with your double kicks. Make a couple of them lazy. Third one snaps. So that way, you know, the person relaxes and then you take advantage of the vulnerability.
Okay, the more flavoring that you guys can add in is now just try to think of the different looks that you might see when it comes to um, how somebody's standing. So for instance, somebody has given you the, the long arm, the long arm sparring stance. What I might do with the probe instead is rather than just jab, well, uh, well you, I'll go through the options. If it's out there, one thing that I might do is just like I'm doing bag work, I'll just keep jabbing that hand. And then what I'll do, and this is sort of the chest part, is I'm gonna see if I keep jabbing the hand, if I can make him jab lower with me. So if I jab here, I jab here, and then I probe under, if he doesn't go with me, I know I have a kick now because he's keeping his hand up here. And, and again, this is where the context of the match is going on and the planning, the pre-planning and everything happening like that. Or if I can get him to move that hand with me, somebody's like, oh, they're just playing with me now. They're, they're just doing backward. That's exactly when I go, ha ha, ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. Uh, and then you snap the front hand again because now they've lowered it and hopefully you've made them comfortable enough that they're not expecting the second one. Or you can do the same thing with your back punch. If somebody is doing that, but maybe they're a little bit pulled back. So this one pointed out uh, is more of a stop, but if somebody's just set, but they've got a long hand, then maybe your pro is, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I've done it to every one of you at least once, is a little hand grab. So that you're out, you just grab the hand and you pull it down. You don't really do anything after that, but you're just in and you're up, ha ha ha. But again, think about what this motion is doing. If I'm setting up my ridge hand now, the moment that I get the hand, if you're thinking about, try to visualize this hand with me. If I can get it here and I can pull it down here, that means there's no more defense for them. And I need to do it in a manner that I don't give away the fact that that's what I'm about to do. But if I can just very casually get this hand here, and then I snap my ridge hand in, I've gotten my, my defense out of the way. And again, this stuff does a whole lot more damage here than it does necessarily in terms of a free sparring, the longevity of the match. But the moment somebody goes, oh my gosh, I had no idea that's what you're doing. I don't know what's going on. Their match is 10 times easier. So give those a try. You try to now change the level, not at the head, unless the goal is for you to kick. Not low, unless the goal is for you to get high. So be thinking about what you're doing with purpose. So. Ms. Murray, 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 yes ma'am, you miss Murray, you don't have to ask me to go to the bathroom in your house, you just got to bow when you go and bow when you come back. And then for some of you guys that are adding kicks in right after, uh, just just be be thinking about again the setup. If I'm pulling a hand down and I pull the hand down behind me, I put the hand in the way of my round kick. So if I'm going to be moving a hand, I want to be moving their hand now to the inside. If I'm going to throw a round kick, if I'm going to throw a side kick, then I would move the hand outside because I don't want it to be able to come back inside of their scoring zone or my target zone.
And time. All right, so that's, that's offensive. You can use it defensively. Nothing is true, everything's committed. What you guys are going to do now is just active hands. Now, visually, if you're fighting an opponent, think about what would be harder to face. I'm here, and I walk up to you this way, and every now and then my hand moves and I go for a technique, or my leg goes and I go for a technique. Or you're set to opponent, and your opponent is doing this. And every now and then they're, they're faking in a hand technique, and then something hits you, and then they go back. And now, now you've made everything that you're doing important. When you're here, and I can argue for both sides, but for the sake of what I want you guys to do, the moment that something sneaks in, then every movement suddenly becomes some important trigger for the, your opponent. Because now they can't just go, oh, they're just moving a bunch, around a bunch. Because now you suddenly hit them with something. Now they're trying to figure out, what are you doing with your hands that made that thing come in and hit me in the face? Or what are you doing that allowed you to kick me in the head? So you guys are just going to be active. I see some of you are still, you're fighting in an alleyway. You guys need to fight in a ring. I'm here with my opponent. I'm just going to keep my hands active. Every now and then I might try to throw, or I'm not try. Every now and then I'm going to throw a heavy technique, whether it's your hands or your feet. But I want to be imagining my opponent as if we're actually in the ring and we're sparring. And I'm following them around, not just. Again, if you train like you're fighting somebody very unskilled, when you fight somebody skilled, you're not going to know what to do. Always make your, like you're playing a video game, the best way to play online is set it to the hardest difficulty before you go online. Because that's what's going to be as close to somebody skilled as you can get. If you play the whole game on easy, and then you go online and play, it's definitely not easy. So you guys need to be setting your imaginary opponents to the highest difficulty that you can imagine in terms of what do I have to manage, okay? One minute, ready and go. Don't look at that camera. The camera is only there so I can watch you and you can watch me when you're doing your shadow stuff. You need to be looking at your faux opponent. I like the speed of your high-low, Miss Klein. The only thing I want you to add is a back technique. Only because when I do do this, if I'm going to do two ranges, I would, well, I'll give you two. If I'm going to do two ranges, I would prefer to go low than high, so that way my head isn't open. Because again, we were talking about targeting. If I go for the body, I may hit the body, but if they can retaliate in time, I traded the body for the head. The head is always a more valuable target. So change it up to go a little high or just add in the third punch and step off line. So be here, high, low, third punch, off line at an angle. Ten. And ten. All right. These are not permanent fixes. Think of your like any artistry. A painter doesn't necessarily have one brush. They have a bunch of brushes. A carpenter doesn't just have one tool, they have a bunch of tools. A sculptor doesn't just have one tool, they have a bunch of tools. Different things for different jobs 
in that project. Well, that's how we're related to. So this is just one of the tools that you can use depending on the problem being presented by an opponent. If you're finding that your techniques, for example, they're just being read, then you have to be unreadable. So by being sporadic, now you make yourself hopefully, in theory, harder to read, which should open it up. And again, once you've solved the problem, that's why fighting can be like chess. If the person loses their cool, now it's not, oh man, they figured out I was reading them. It's how come I can't block them anymore? And if you can get them to think the second one, then you don't really have to do anything too fancy to continue on because now they're already in their head. I can't block them anymore. That's your goal is to, uh, at higher levels I should say, is to get them in here first. All right, now we're gonna talk about the second one, illusions. This one's pretty simple. You're just doing stuff with people's perception to hide techniques. So this one is the one that I use a lot, and that's the front hand drum. So we're gonna finally talk about using it. And again, you're doing everything with a purpose. If you don't understand how it works, or you're like, you try it and you try it and you try it and it just doesn't fit your style, not that you can't get it to work, because with practice you can get any one of these techniques to be effective, but it doesn't fit with your style, then you scrap it and you, you use the stuff that's useful, obviously. I have an opponent. I'm gonna use the trophy. So I'm, I'm at this trophy, I get hit. I can hit right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it, you can visually see the space between us is, is not a whole lot. But leaving my front foot, and that's important, leave my front foot, I just take a step back. Oh my gosh, there's so much more room now, but there's really not because my front foot's still here. So the moment that I lean back, I cover the space again, illusion. But if I leave my hand up here, guess what? It doesn't really matter. I still seem really close to my opponent. The moment I drop my hand, however, you can see visually, oh my gosh, you're so far away. Then I do one more thing. I just give myself a little lean back. And I mean, I lean my body out of the way. Now, visually, the space has expanded. But again, if I extend my hand and lean, I am literally right there. So by using this illusion of space, I can be here on an opponent and then still be able to cover that space as almost if I was moving lightning fast, but I really didn't move lightning fast. I just tricked you into thinking I was far away. So what you guys are gonna do is use that front hand illusion. You can do it both ways to set up the second technique or the first one. I like back this because that's how I was trained. So I like using it to get somebody to think I'm far and then snap a back fist and then I'll come back. You can do it for a, a other hand technique. So I can be here, I, in the, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I drop my hand to open the top because if somebody doesn't think I can reach them, this is a lot easier to get. Or I'll raise my hand like I'm asking a question, and I've done this to a few of you a few times, I'll do this, and you just look at my hand and you're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, don't worry about it. And then you just keep your hand up there, and then almost 90% of the time, somebody tries to either go for my hand for some strange reason, or they'll try to go under it. Illusion. You go for my hand, what do I do? I open up your ribs. As soon as you go up for it, there's a side kick. You try to go below my hand, well, I still have the space, and we already talked about if I can get on top of the hand. The moment that hand comes under mine, I win it, because I am actually a lot closer than the person thinks I am. You can also do this with your back hand, but I'll talk about that in a second. So all I want you guys to do is just practice, and this one's more of a thinking drill, so you have to be actively thinking about my hand is here, now I snap my back fist. My hand is here, I'm going over the top. Blah, 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 blah. 30 seconds, ready and go.
And again, I say it's requiring your thought because you have to be doing it on purpose. You're not doing it just because it's random. You're doing it on purpose. Is it today? Yes, sir. Okay. Double check. Sean, stop growing. And time. Okay. Now your backhand. Uh, box is a little bit different, but somebody who's got a really sneaky backhand that I can think of off the top of my head, Roy Jones Jr. Go watch some Roy Jones Jr. highlights. He's really gnarly with his punches. At least in his prime he was. But if you just think visually, what can happen? So you just, I'm on camera. So you're, you're my opponent. You can see my backhand. I drop my backhand and I turn. Now it's gone. L literally the visual cue of it isn't there anymore. And that's the same principle as me having went behind my back, grabbed my knife, and then next thing I know, you're getting stabbed with it. So visually now I can do the same thing that I did with this hand with the backhand. And what I'll do is I'll use my front hand, almost like an angler fish, as a distraction for the tee. So I'll have my front hand here. This one will be back, and I'll be doing all this stuff. I'll be doing my probes. And then next thing you know, the back hand comes out, and you didn't even know that it was coming from the back because it wasn't your focus. It was hidden behind my illusion. This really is only going to be applicable in terms of the concept to hands, though, because you, you can't. Like your back foot, if you're doing a kicking stance, your back foot's already hidden. And you, it doesn't matter, unless you're like the flash, there's no way. I've only met one person in my entire martial arts here in Mahai who could switch fast enough. You didn't see the back leg kicking. And since him, I haven't seen anybody else do it. It's possible, but none of you guys are really training your kicks to be like that. So that's why I'm not going to go into detail about it. But. Um, you can use the, the same thing with the kicking universal chamber. I chamber up here, and you have no idea what kick is about to come out. And so somebody goes, and again, this is the chest. Somebody goes for a light block down. I'll snap it around into a round kick. If somebody goes for a pass, then I'm going to go with the current. I have my hand in here, they try to pass my foot. I'll whack it around into a hook kick. Somebody tries to punch over it, which I've seen, I don't know how many prep cyclers did that to Miss Lonegar, thinking that they were gonna somehow magically get over her leg. And every time she just sat there, they would go and she would just side kick them. So again, it's, it's the unknown that makes the technique more effective. If they don't know what's about to happen, then it makes it easier for me to deliver. So 30 seconds. Try to hide your movement. And again, this is more active because you're only really going to know how well you're doing it when you've done it to another human being. But you can still practice the concept. Hide your movement from the back and just, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, yeah, there comes my hand. Or figure out how you can make that work with a different technique. I like the back punch because like we talked about, straight techniques are really hard to read. Process, I should say. While if I'm here and I did the same thing, ha, you'll see that from a mile away. Hopefully. If you hit somebody with a big arching back ridge hand, they deserve to be hit with a big arching back ridge hand. Ready and go.
Uh, another way that you guys can use the hidden backhand, uh, and I'm talking to Scanlon in particular because I've seen you throw it a couple of times as a reverse back fist. Because the back, again, you don't know that it's there. Boom, you snap around and it's too late before. It's a lot sneakier than having your hand already up because as soon as you, just turning in general the motion that our body makes to spin, it's there in camera. But if it's gone and I spin and then it snaps up, then it's a lot harder to read in terms of the opponent's processing. All right, in time. All right, much like our 17 indisputable laws of leader teamwork, a lot of this end stuff is leading into the end game stuff of chess. Um, so, for example, this stuff separated on its own can be very effective to somebody that does not pay attention or isn't equally processing the fight. Meaning, if I'm using prep cyclers because they're the most recent spars that I've seen, like the example I gave with Miss Wanniger, she didn't have to change anything about that technique because she'd pick her leg up, they'd try to get over it, some psychic in the stomach. They reset, and rather than go, oh man, she's picking her leg up and she's side kicking me with it, they would just repeat the same plan again, thinking they were gonna get a different outcome, and they'd get side kick again, and then you could see the frustration start to set in on them. What's going on? Why can't I get past the side kick? Because you keep, you keep trying to. So with somebody, an opponent that isn't, and it doesn't matter the level because there are some of you truth hurts, that still don't process what's going on in your fight. You're just kind of winging it. With somebody that's not processing or thinking about their actions as it happens, any of these things can work and then you just stick to them until they figure it out or you get bored. However, with somebody equal level or higher level, then it becomes a chess match. And so that is where I was getting into with the hands where you might have one technique work one time and then that'll be your learning process. If I'm in here, I'm doing my probe and I get one punch in, but then the second time I go for it, I see them immediately go to block. Now we're playing chess because now I know that they know that I knew that they were gonna do that. Or they know that they, you see what I, this is a, ha, ha, I know that you know that I know that you know that I knew that you knew that I was going to do that. And so now I have to start doing things two moves ahead. That doesn't necessarily mean I change the plan. It just means that now I'm going to commit to a different fallacy. Oh, I didn't realize that you knew you had figured out my move. I'm going to be oblivious to the fact that you picked it up because what I'm really doing is I'm setting up my backhand. Because if I can get you to bite on that again because you think you have me, then I'll go, I'll try it and I'll, I'll pretend to be frustrated and then I throw my backhand instead. Because again, by you reacting to this outside hook, you opened yourself right up to a straight punch. And again, it builds and it builds and it builds on that and that's where you start having to play your opponent like you're playing chess. I'm gonna do this and then this so that I can get this move. And then you try it and you see if it works. If it works, cool beans. And if it keeps working, you rinse and repeat. If they figure it out, then you have to start being four moves. Or Again, the more that you want to use the same technique, the more moves ahead you have to be with it. Or you just change and you go a different route. 
and that that becomes the game at a higher level. I'll either be six moves ahead to get that one move, or I'll go a different route and see if that one works instead. And it's prodding all the weak points that you can find. You're in a class drill. For every push-up, you do two punches. And I say two because every two punches counts as one. So I'll be here. One, two. Then I'm going to do two push-ups. One. One, two, three, four. Then I'm going to do three push-ups. One, two, three, four, five, six. I run and do one extra one because it feels better. But you're going to do that until I say stop. And you're going to see how high you can get in your numbers. You are going to be tired. That's the point. Maintain your technique when you start punching and maintain your targets. Not just here. We don't spar like this. This will never be effective unless you're fighting somebody exactly this height who never puts their hands up. Everything needs to be going to a different spot, a different technique. Okay, ready and go. If you're not gonna do a push up, do a squat. There you go, squat instead. Oh, I like those hands, Murray. Well, I see some of you are starting to hit the wall already. Don't worry, you've only been going for a minute. We still have plenty more minutes. Oh, now it's been two minutes. You still have at least five more minutes. Don't worry, guys. It's great. You guys are going to be so great. So great. Some of you could said, shed some tears for me. That would be great because it sustains me. No, not a, not a finger tear. I need a real one. Well, Miss Strand is going. She's like a machine over there. Looks like Mr. Steve is being a machine too. Again, just don't throw your punches like you're fighting somebody in that height. You throw, you throw them like a shadow spot. Move around as you're throwing them. Then you're doing your push-ups from a new spot. Jump back up. Do them from a different spot. Jump back up. One more minute, one more minute. Probably 30 more seconds left. And time. All right, I'm putting your Black belt code in there one more time for this week. Uh, right now, there's only eight of you that have joined the class, so I'm missing a whole bunch of you. Unless you're a family, then that will account for some of the number discrepancies. If you have a Google Classroom for school, 
you cannot use the same account. You have to literally make a new one, um, which should be simple because you can make a bajillion Google accounts. Yes, you can use all one account as a family. MWB, PPSPF, okay. So that is, uh, gosh darn it, Ms. Churchma, you took my chat away from everybody else. Okay, now for everybody. So little dude is bringing it over with his banner. Make sure you join the class. And that is, uh, that's it. Cut attention, file courtesy. Hands on your back. Black ball creed. As a dedicated student of the martial arts, I live my life by the principles of black ball. Modesty, courtesy, integrity, perseverance, self-control, and indomitable spirit. Latter proposition. Sir, why don't I throw you the dust? Hurrah. You need your notebooks and your pens. Oh, <laughs> wrong day. That's what I thought it was. Well, I got five minutes. I can still make it work. All right, guys, I'm going to check your pants. This is everything I'm saying. I'm <laughs> Oops. It's okay. We can do everything we need to do in five minutes. Just motivates you to stay focused and get on point. All right. We've talked about all the important parts when we talked about assisting. Your visual, verbal, and physical cues. We talked about the time frames in which you can interject these things in class. When a workout starts, when the instructor is counting number by number, and once they've begun their end-of-class drill. We also talked about forms and combinations and how some of those phrases can be the same and how some of the corrections can be now some of them are not. Hands up in Chun Ji doesn't make any sense. So what I'm gonna do really quick is just an example for you guys, and then I'll call on you randomly, and I want you to be thinking about this for high level corrections, pure, pure corrections, and brown belt corrections. So I'm gonna do Chung Mu, and then I'm gonna ask one of you, maybe two of you, to give me one praise, and one correction. Remember, the corrections are done in a growth mind ideology. I like the technique you used on your sidekicks. What would make your form better is chambering on all of your blocks. Not, I like this thing, but this thing over here is horrible. Don't do that. All right. Chang Mu. Aya. Aya! Okay. Who wants to be random contestant number one? Mr. Church, my does. Go. All right. And remember, you're delivering this as if I'm the student, not like you're giving me an answer in class. Yes, sir. You did a really nice job of having nice and deep stances, but when... Uh, <laughs> it's already failed. All right. You did a good job at keeping your hands up, and something you can improve on is by keeping your hands up when you're kicking. Good. All right. Now, as bonus, I threw some stuff in there that was wrong. 
What were some things that were wrong? Like super wrong. Things you definitely need to correct. Mr. Hatch, what was one? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you didn't go into from the back stance to the front stance smash into the spear. You, you stayed in that front stance that whole time. Very good. Okay, that was one. What was the other one? Mr. Jordan. Um, um, you forgot to do the three steps on the jump kick. Three steps on the jump kick, yes. Yeah. Okay, that was a secret one. There's another one that was wrong in there. Technically two more. Ooh. This is, so this is what I mean when we talk about, when you do your spear hand, is your palm up or is it down? It's down, that's right, but I did it palm up. Now in that moment, that could have been something, again, that's why I say high level corrects. When I am watching somebody at this level, I almost have to be watching at a distance, meaning that I am not honing in on what are they doing with their legs? What are they, are they chambering? I've got to look at the whole picture and I want to be doing it in my head to see if it matches up. If something's off, that's the only way that I'm going to see it. I'm viewing everything objectively, regardless of who the student is. And this is a really important thing when you have students like um, Yuvia or Mr. Braxton, some of our higher level students, if you're looking at them like, oh my gosh, you're, so, you're doing so well, I don't have anything to say, then you're missing all the mistakes that they're making. Everybody is always making mistakes. Everything can always be improved upon, regardless of belt level. And if I don't look at them objectively as if, what could they be doing better, then I am going to miss those really small mistakes. Obviously, when a purple belt or a brown belt is just learning Chengdu and they do a palm up the first time through, I'm not going to directly say anything to them. I'm just going to do it step by step again. And then I make sure to when we get to that part, I go, all right, and calm down. But black belt, for example, doing Chunji again and they do the wrong step, you should know that, that step is the right way. That's when it has to be directly corrected, right then and there, otherwise it becomes a bad habit. Does it make sense? Okay, that was it. Three minutes over, my bad. Go ahead and stand up. Black belt cold is in there. Uh, hopefully you guys will put it in there. All of your homework goes there. If you email me your homework, I'm going to email you back and say, oh, thanks. Put it in the Google Classroom, though. Cut attention. Back to Steve. Au revoir. Au revoir. Sayonara. Do svidaniya. Adios. Buenas noches. Oh my gosh, Miss Murray. Unreal. Hold on, let me try and find your thing because you keep there you are. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was just asking, did you know that there's a martial artist who can break through bulletproof glass? It's martial I did not know that. My a video on YouTube. I'm sure there is. There is. So my dad pulled it up and he broke through bulletproof glass. With what technique? His hands. I don't know what specifically technique, but it was his hands. Oh, I'll have to look that up. I'm, I'm intrigued now. All right. Bye, Mary. Bye, sir. Bye, Mary. My Mary. Mr. Benza, you need something? Nope, nope, you're gone.